Answering yourself for what? Why would you do that? that Waking up from that dream. What dream was you dreaming? That you had the prettiest face. Hey, listen, player. Listen, listen, listen. Check it, check, check it out, player. Check it out, check it out, check it out. You can say that all you want, but all I'm going to tell you is that uh, I am the prettiest face on this month. So there's that. But I'm going to get us rolling. I'm just dropping these links so niggas know we live. And I gotta finish the Mace, I gotta set it up. I don't know what I'm what I did. But um for some reason the bot, the YouTube bot in the chat mm -hmm. is not um it's not doing what it's supposed to do, dude. Like it's supposed to post every time we go live, right? Yeah. Um, it's supposed to do that, but for some reason it just hasn't been doing it, and I don't know why. Yeah, because I just went to the YouTube page to try to find it because I was gonna put the link on the Facebook page real quick. <clears throat> That's weird. Yeah, um, here I can send you the link in Discord. Ow, I just uh, racked my hand. Here we go. There we go. Yep, yep, there we go. And that's good now. Okay, sweet. All right, you ninjas ready? Yeah. Daryl, is you ready? I mean, I need a nigga to. Say something. I'm not exactly looking at you right now, Daryl. I don't know if this nigga is nodding his head or what. I, I'm, I'm I don't know. He's he's doing shit. Uh, being Daryl, nigga. That's what he's doing. I'm being a villain. That's what I'm being. Uh, is it a villain when you're just being you? Are you really a villain? All right, so he must he's clearly good to go now, Mace. Now that he actually wanna say something. So <laughs> y'all boys ready to get this train rolling. Yes, sir. All right, all right. And people, welcome to another live episode of your favorite weekly sports show. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is ITC Sports Ball, and I am. Your man, Jerome Span, Of course, pretty face on ITC. Don't you forget it, baby. And I'm here with the sports ball crew. We've got that hot take spitter. The man who rips like Dylan spits. He is the modern day Ali on the microphone. When he steps into your home, all your ladies is gone. He is that man. And you know, it's your boy, Mace, always with the hot takes ready to go. Let's get it. And of course. We've got ITC's resident troll. He is that guy that sees a fire and he's like, I got that gasoline and gunpowder. What's happening? If you let him into your brain, he will drive you insane. He is that man, Daryl. Mr. Uh, hot takes don't have hot takes. He got delusional takes. And we're going to just keep on going with that roll and that ball. And, um, that's it. Yep. So you're playing a role when you say this. You're not being your true self. Cool. Makes sense. All I do is live truth. 
can you walk outside and say my my cowboys are only good when time doesn't matter what does that even mean i feel like you just said some i feel like you just said something right there to try to troll me but it didn't even make no sense so let, let's let's get on let's let's get on with the show how we're supposed to hey already bro already but yes of course, some things have happened. We're sorry we missed you last week. I had some things to do on my calendar. So, yeah, in case you guys didn't know, we're getting older. So sometimes we get a little busy. Uh, but, yeah, it happens. Apologize not being here. But over the last week, we've seen a lot of things go down. So we might as well start with the NBA and the spiciness in the tournament because we have started to see some teams are already getting knocked out of the tournament. And that includes teams like these San Antonio Spurs who played the Warriors last night. And base, I don't know if you was watching. But I was watching our boy Big Slim out there. Boy, the Slim Reaper was going crazy. Look, hey, it seemed like some of them niggas done finally figured out, okay, we just need to get the ball to him, bro. We need to give him the ball and let him make the decisions because what we doing out here ain't working. It ain't it. So, Mace, how are you feeling about what's been going on with Big Vic and, and just the overall tournament here? So it's it's turning out a lot better than I thought it would. I, I mean, it's it's still weird. But, you know, all new things are weird, but it's only time will tell if it's actually a good thing for the NBA. But um, so far, the games have been entertaining. They've been competitive. Um, I still don't like the courts. Maybe that's just the old nigga in me, but I, I can't. Know. I can't stand I some it. of them are cool. So, some of them are, but I think they just they try too hard. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's the team colors that 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 are that are making it bad. Like some of the courts actually do look pretty cool, but it's like when you try to throw in the team colors in there and their phoenix colors and their orange and purple, you know that's uh, I, it gets a little sus. <laughs> I don't like it. So, courtesy of uh, NBA.com here, they put this out before the tournament started. So, just for everybody in our audience here that doesn't that hasn't gotten a chance to see this yet this is what all the courts are looking like so let's go down with it mace let's just hit it do you like it or not give me give me a yes or no we'll start with the hawks no celtics nope Nets. i like it hornets no bulls like it Cavs. we love it we love it mavs boring <laughs> All right, Nuggets. You know what? I like it. All right. Pistons. Boring. Warriors. Hate it. Rockets. You know, I actually like that. That blue is okay. hot. Oh, okay. Okay. I see you. Take you back to the old days when I yeah. came, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we like that. All right. Pacers. Eyesore. Clippers. You know what? I like it. Lakers. It doesn't look good on the court. Yellow and purple don't look good on the court. Okay. Here's where I think they messed up with the Lakers one. I understand you guys' colors are more the the gold and the purple, right? But they should have balanced that out more. There should be more purple on the court than what they have. It. Yeah. Like they maybe they should, they could have kept all of this like gold, right? And then taken the inside and just completely like purpled it out, right? So then there would be a little bit more balance. But I think it's just it's way too much gold. Yeah, it's yeah, it it doesn't look good on the court. Not at yep, all. Yep. Grizzlies. Boring. Heat. They should have chosen another color besides gray right there. <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know what they could have did, but something. Okay. Bucks. Nah. Nah. The, hey, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this right now. The Bucks one is the worst one of everybody. Uh, there is just garbage. There is this. I got one thing to say, and I'm tired. Mm. I'm already tired of Mason's freak is saying boring, boring, boring. All of this is cheap. <laughs> this is cheap. This is all. This is cheap. Everyone is just like one fancy different logo on the same thing this is nothing are we even going on the court to look at the court we're watching the game it's an eyesore you have to see the court brother it's a first off yeah. you have no reason to even talk about eyesores at this point see I, what is what does that even mean 
or what did it mean? Don't don't at least bro, don't get us sidetracked, man. They should have threw some green somewhere in there from Minnesota. No, they need to throw some okay. talent on them freaking uh courts. That's what I'm saying right now. These this <gasps> Pelicans over here looking like looking like the freaking Seahawks freaking jerseys. That's what this is. I can I basically say a, a no for everybody on the Pelicans. I'm guessing. Maybe uh, you know what you know what they should have did instead of having the purple, they should have went with the dark blue. Maybe I don't I don't know, but mm, that 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 purple. Why, right didn't did, they, why didn't they just keep their whole white red their white red gimmick? I don't know why they had to do this. I don't, I don't like it. Come on, and then and the Knicks is like predictable as hell. Like, come on now. You know, I actually okay. like the Knicks. You it's like the Knicks? Okay. Yeah. You will like this predictable nonsense right here. But you go all the way up and say something else. Uh, Lakers is no, you know what? I'm done. Nope. 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 All right, Thunder. I actually like it. Trash. Magic. Boring. <laughs> Creative. <laughs> what? Magic. Wait, is that, that, that's, creative. that's creative? You say this is? Yeah, because they did, I'm telling you, there's only a logo change. If we had the same logo scheme as the other one that May said that was actually like, oh, good. You know, he wouldn't complain about it. Like, for example, the Knicks versus the Magic. If they did a double high, a double, a double letter thing, he would not complain about it. But just because this is just freaking boring, like I told you, this is like sketchy. The colors as hell. are boring, brother. What do you mean? The colors are the same. The colors are boring for the Knicks. It's the same freaking color. Go down to the 76ers, brother. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I actually like this one. I like this one. We already know Daryl hates this one, so we we don't even need to ask him. It's a, it's a Philly thing. What what is so it. amazing about this the, the Sixers? <laughs> I want to know right I, now. I actually like this one. What, bro, is, what, so, do you mean? what is so amazing of the Sixers? The colors are not magic. an eyesore. The colors are not an eyesore, and I like the actual seventy six written on the court. So, what could the Magic do better? Choose different colors. Maybe they, I don't know, brother. It's just boring. What are the magic colors, um, Dro? Like two tone blues and what, white or gray? What, what, are, what, what, what are the magic colors? I know they got that, like, baby blue. Yeah, they got like two tone blues. Yeah. They, Maybe if they would have did like gray and, ba- and the baby blue instead of the darker blue, they're like that navy. So, so, yeah. That Suns is an eyesore. I told you, brother, I, I can't do it. El Valley. Look, I'm gonna no. be honest. The the Suns is another one that I just don't understand. It's like, where does this teal come from, bro? You know what it is? They couldn't. They couldn't do. They couldn't do the orange because it, wow. it was probably too close to somebody else's court colors. Man, stop. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. That just does not make no, sense. All right. Let's see. Trailblazers. I actually like this one. I like this one. Trash. What? How? How? How's that? How's that even good? Because it it's simple I, and it makes sense. Did he did? Didn't he just say a uh, eyesore to a last red court before? Didn't he just say that? And don't you? Mm-hmm. Oh, what's this one? What's this one? So, come on, come on, Mason. I like I like the logo in the middle. I don't say like it's an eyesore. Say it's an eyesore because it's the same freaking. I don't like the eyesore. colors, but I like the logo. No, say the logo is dope, but the colors just don't get it done. You me. can't trust Mace on his word. Look, it's the same freaking colors. You can't. You can't. Did I not say I don't like the colors, but I like the logo in the middle of the court? No, Did I not like say that? Lo- you like the logo for the magic too? Cut that out. What do you mean? It's just the magic with the star instead of the A. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Spurs. It's too much. Too much. Yeah, I'll say I didn't really like the Spurs one. I when I watched them play their tournament game at home, it was like, ooh, that court is kind of ugly. Like if if San like Antonio, it. when we scroll down, if San Antonio had this, I would probably be better about have about San Antonio's. But why is there no purple in this? Why is there no red in this? What is what is Toronto doing? They just is like, ah, right, we're just we're just gonna go, we're just gonna go with gray and grayish. That just gives me an Indian theme for that one. Tell you the truth. For San Antonio's? 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I feel it. I feel Sir, it. it's Native Americans. Get it right. Uh, yeah, what? And, or indigenous people. Get it right, nigga. Yeah, bro. Right, um, right. Utah. I like it. Well, I, I, I like it. I like it. I like the Utah one a lot. I actually think it, it works great for them. I think two, it's very good. Two tones? Two tone yeah, color? It, it works for it. It works like for it. I don't don't ask me why, but it just works. So okay. everything with two tone colors, like got you. How is that? You know, I hate you, brother. <laughs> All right, and wizards. I like it. No, I saw. Stop it. I like it. Stop it. I think it's the perfect contrast. I like it. You don't even know what contrast is. You can't even spell contrast. How about that? <laughs> You couldn't read contrast out of a book if you tried out loud. Oh god. Out loud? You tested me like that? That's wild. See what kind of see the disrespect I get on this show, man. I ain't disrespect. It's delusional. Hey, be quiet before I call Jeffrey Bezos on you. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Maybe you get you might give me a raise. Something like that. Hey, maybe. I don't know. But Back to it though. Now that we've got through those those uh, courts, so everybody can actually see them and know what we're talking about, right? And Daryl over there being hater number one. Um, Mace, so how do you feel? Did you watch the game last night? And just overall, how you feeling about the tournament? So I didn't. I didn't actually catch the game. I was watching some bits of college football last night, but um, Vic was working. But listen, though, man. Um, he seems to, like I said, he has the occasional off night or whatever. Maybe it's just how San Antonio happened to be playing. But for the most part, he's been consistent. Um, he's given you everything, everything that he basically showed you over in Europe. He's brought here. No problem. Like he he has the range, the, the ball handling skills, all of that there, the shot blocking. So, yeah, man, um, I do. I plan on tuning into every San Antonio game I can. And um who knows? I I I I probably the old the old nigga in me didn't like the tournament at first, but it might be good for the league. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. So oh I got a question for both of y'all. I'm gonna ask you this. I asked my wife this question the same thing last night. Whose skill set would you rather have? Like you get to come with their their size and everything. You want Steph Curry or Vicks? You know what? I'm going to say Steph only because I think there's more longevity in being able to do what Steph can do than what uh, when Ben Yama can. No, no, take take the longevity out of it. We're not going to talk about that. Like, we, okay. we know, right? Big men are more likely to break down. Like, we know what all that is. We're just saying, you get to get that skill set. That's who you become now. Who's you want? Okay, well, give me Vic then, for sure. <laughs> Easy money, because I mean, I probably have my my short term trajectory is a lot higher being seven four and being able to do do what Vic can do than being six six three and doing what Steph can do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Steph didn't even take off to what year three or four in the league after after he got the ankle injuries under control. Yeah, when he finally got the surgery like he needed to get all that time and then started actually wearing like ankle braces and doing stuff to strengthen his ankle. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. After he got the injuries under control is kind of when Steph like actually took off. Daryl, who are you taking? You want Big Vic skill set or you want Steph? Picking Steph. I should have known. That's his man's. I, I should I should have known, bro. <laughs> I don't even know why I asked the question. I should have just assumed Steph. You know what I mean? Like that's that's Daryl's man's right there. Me personally, I'm taking Big Vic all day. You give me a say. Have you look? If y'all watched this game last night, my man was out here hitting threes. He was out here. It got blocked by uh by Gary Payton the second right. But nigga, he's seven feet tall. Hit a nigga with the behind the back. I'm about to go lay it up on you, Mace. Seven footers don't do this that he do. I, you know what, you know what the craziest, the craziest thing that he can, that, that he does on the court is his like stop and start ability. My man can speed boost and stop on a dime 
like a guard can. Ain't nobody else doing that. Nope. That's like that's like Durant, but five inches taller. Mm hmm. Hey, look, there's a reason why me and you were so hyped on this nigga coming in the league, dog. Like, look, we both are have watched the league since we were little, right? So we've seen the game evolve and we can see a special talent. This dude is something else. Like, Mace, I cannot wait till what is it, December. 21st or whatever the hell it is, the deck that we going, and I'm going to see Big Vic put on a performance against the Bulls because the Bulls is boo boo. Okay, if we, if we since we talking basketball, I brought them up, brought up my team before y'all even ask. Very simple blow the whole damn thing up, blow it up, blow it up, get everybody out. Everybody, the G, let the GM start with a fresh roster and just go from there because. Zach ain't winning us no championship. Demar ain't winning us no championship. Lonzo ain't coming back no time soon. I look, I am rooting for Lonzo to come back, but I have very, very little belief at this point that Lonzo Ball will ever be back as a NBA player because his knee just seems completely done. It seems like you can't keep missing season on top of season on top of season and not even getting back at all and think that and have me to have faith. So no, but Mace. Like, like watching Big Vic last night, <laughs> man. Oh my god, dog! Like, I haven't been this hyped watching a dude coming into the league since when, like, I had to say LeBron. I'll be honest with you, like, excuse me, Ooh. <laughs> like with KD, I had questions on whether he was ever going to be able to be strong enough to play the game, right? Like to, to be consistently great and be strong enough to do that. He proved that, Hey, yeah, look, I'll get my strength up. I name, I may not be cock diesel swole, but I'm strong enough to not let you push me off my spot, you know? And that's all he ever really needed. He didn't need to be cock diesel swole. Right. So I had my reservations about him. Um, who else was real hyped after KD Mace? Like, hey, um, me out here. After KD, you probably was. Yeah. I don't know. Right. It, it, what wasn't it? What a couple of the fucking, couple of the bus from um Cleveland from Cleveland's picks. Couple of their bus. Um, I don't. But see, I don't think either of those but guys I, were I, hyped. You I, know what I mean? I, one I one of them was hurt. um. Who? Wasn't it um? Dang, what was his name? I know you ain't talking about Anthony Bennett. Yeah, yeah, bro. There was a hype. No, he was not Bennett. hyped. He was not hyped. Stop that. Yeah, he was. Right. He was not hyped, Mace. No, he was not, dude. He was just the number one pick that they was taking so they could tank it out again. They no. Mm -mm. There was hype around him. He didn't even play that season. Didn't he get hurt? Uh no, I don't think so. Oh, he just stunk it up. <laughs> yeah, he, he just stunk. I don't know, I mean, man. Look, um, Mace, that was a draft where let, let's go through this. It goes Bennett, Oladipo, Otto Porter Jr., Cody Zeller, Alex Lynn, Norlands Noel, Ben McLemore, KCP, Contavious Call Will Pope for those that don't know, uh, Trey Burke, CJ McCullum. Michael Carter Williams, Stephen Adams, Kelly Olenek, Shabazz Muhammad, then Giannis, Lucas uh, Nogueira, I think that's how you say his name, Dennis Schroeder, Shane Larkin, Sergey Karazov, I think that's how you say it, Tony Snell, Gorgo Dang, Mason Plumley, Solomon Hill, Tim Hardaway Jr., Reggie Bullock, Andre Roberson, Rudy Gobert. Livio Jean Charles, Archie Goodwin, Namat, I don't know, I can't say that. Alan Crab, and that was the start of the second round was Alan Crab. Mace, who the hell they was going? Look, the only way that they was going to get right there was if they managed to be like, "Hey, we're going to take this G this Giannis dude and see if he work it out for us." But even then, it wouldn't have worked out because. When LeBron decided to come back home, they was trading everybody. You know what I'm saying? So who who the hell was they supposed to draft, Mace? Who? 
We we heard it was like what three good NBA players out there that are at least at good level. Hey, that was got, a terrible draft. We got KCP, we got Rudy. Yeah, you got Giannis, Stephen Adams, and KCP and CJ McCollum. So five players out of thirty were actually good. That's a crap sheet. <laughs> like, I, I, you, hey man, some, sometimes 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 being the being the top piece of garbage is better than being the lower pieces lower piece of the garbage, <laughs> brother. That's all I'm saying. Sometimes hey, being the garbage work. on the top of the trash can is a little better than being on the garbage at the bottom, <laughs> though. Hey, hey, come with a better paycheck. That's all I know. That's all yeah, that hey, I like know. I said, hey, the the top of the garbage get paid. <laughs> <laughs> The top of the garbage pile still gets paid. Ooh, goodness gracious. All right. But um, but yeah, so honestly, I don't think I've been hyped on a player like that since Giannis. I mean, even Anthony Davis, I wasn't no, I wasn't he didn't have the Giannis. hype around him. Like, I mean, like we, a we lot of these move. a lot of these guys have become great players, all right. But there wasn't that, there wasn't the oh, this is the one hype behind them, you know what I mean? Like a guy like Steph, right. If you watch college basketball, you knew who Steph was when he was coming out, right? Because he was like, oh, my God, this dude is literally out here putting Davidson on his back every night and, and managing to keep these boys winning, right? But even him, I'll be honest, I was a big Steph Curry fan. I was a person that thought he was going to be a really, really good NBA player. But this? Nigga, I didn't think he was this. This man has changed the whole dynamic. Like, he's – legitimately the greatest shooter of all time there is no one else who can compete with him and he has an argument for being one of the greatest scorers of all time too because don't get it twisted why he will step back on your ass he will also take it to the rap and put in rack and put up one of them finger rolls on you hey you looking stupid and i was a like, maze i was telling you last night hey if i had to guard steph curry Hey, the coach gonna be pissed off at me because I'm giving up layups all day. But when that nigga asked me why, I'm gonna say nigga two is less than three. Oh yeah. You ain't about to embarrass me. Put me on one of these you step back clips and then turn around and be ah, you ain't doing that to me. Yeah, you ain't no. you ain't about to shoot the ball and turn around before I go in on me. I'm gonna cluck you upside the head, brother. <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> the first time you put one up on me and turn around, I'm gonna. <laughs> hey, look, I'm, gonna be no punch, bro. I'm gonna like hammer in the like right there in the crown back of the bop. I'm gonna bop the hell out you, man. You ain't about I to do that. Me. He could hey, he could be going to the he could be going to the rack. I'm still going over that screen all day because I know that's <laughs> a setup. He's just trying to step back and embarrass you. Hell no, you ain't doing that to me, Steph. I'm not the one. No. Said, if, if anybody need if anybody needs a 15th man on the roster to take a take a foul and let somebody know that today ain't today, I'll hey, pop I somebody good, quick. I got six good ones. I got six good ones. I got six me. fouls. What's up? I'll bop the hell out of somebody right now. <laughs> <laughs> for the vet minimum, brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for a hey, vet minimum for, for a sure, ten day, bro. for a ten day, for I'll bop the hell out of somebody for a ten day for right sure. now. Hey, cause look, once you get one ten day, baby, you in the system. We good mm -hmm. now. Somebody else gonna need them six fouls at some point, and I got yep. them right here for you, baby. Six right here. See these hands? <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of that. You know what I'm saying? Gonna, hey, man, it's gonna be a lot of. Mm, a lot of those real quick. Mm -hmm. yes, I, I, I promise you, brother, I'll bop the hell out of somebody for a 10-day right now. Damn, I kind of hurt my arm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, all right, so to keep it moving here, though, um, overall, you feel like the, the, the tournament has been, like, a positive thing, though. It hasn't been. Yeah, yeah, it, def right? it definitely has been a positive um, especially with somebody coming out coming into it with a negative outlook on it. I'm pleasantly surprised and happy it's actually turned out well. Like teams are actually they actually seem to care about advancing in the tournament. Um, this isn't just like some like, throwaway. It, it seems to me that it's like the same thing with the the best comparison I, I would think of in this particular case would be like the Premier League. This is like the FA Cup, where they everybody in the league knows that the FA Cup. You ain't winning the league, but it means a lot to win that joint, though. Yep. Well, don't want to get caught in basketball here.
because we also have a very big WWE pay-per-view tonight. We have got Survivor Series War Games. I did that for you, Daryl. You like the way I put a little something on it for you? You like that? I hope you did. Little sauce. Little sauce. Uh, so we don't have the match order yet, but we do have like the full out card already at this point. So we will start here. We'll we'll start with the singles matches and then we'll go to the war games matches, right? Because I know Daryl's gonna have something to say about all of this. So let's start with Santos Escobar versus Carlito. Daryl, how are you feeling about this match and who you got as your winner? Hey, that's a bathroom break. Um, probably uh, Santos probably gonna uh, get the dub, uh, get the dub, probably to convince this whole heel look. Carlito can take a L. I won't really invest in that match. I'm just saying. Spit in the face that are those that are cool. <laughs> I, I think I think it comes down to whose um, gimmick can take a can take a loss and recover still. Um, heels usually have to win in some to 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 truly arrive as a heel. You have to win in some scummy fashion. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like you you have to. I so, don't, I don't disagree with that. That that overall statement, I you do like. There has to be ways that you truly set yourself apart as a heel. In your victories, you can't just be the oh, I pull this tights. Can't yeah, yeah, you have to like if if that's the way you want to go, you have to go all out with it. Because, like I said, for the most part, faces can usually take a loss and recover, especially if they especially if the scummy stuff happens. So they they can recover their image, their gimmick a little bit better. But like as a heel, you you gotta you gotta pull something. You gotta do something. You gotta you gotta knock the ref out for a second. You know, grab a chair, grab something, ring bell, something. You gotta do something. Maybe some brass knuckles, something. You gotta come out with something, man. You gotta take. I like something. it. The brass knuckles. Also, you want him to do the Jake Paul? What Jake Paul doing now? Hit you with the knuckles. Put him in his trunks, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to, hey, man, you got to keep, or in your boot, you know what I'm saying? Just, <laughs> you you got to do something, man. As a heel, bro, you got to win in some scummy fashion. You got to, you have to pick like a scummy gimmick. Some, all right, so Daryl, who you got to win in this match tonight then? Um, Escobar. Mace, who you got winning? I, I gotta go Escobar, man. I need scum scumbag Gabar. That's it, scumbag Gabar. That's where we're going with. Yeah, I Santos Escobar all day. You don't break him away to make him into this heel to then eventually have the match series with Rey Mysterio and have him lose to Carlito tonight. It makes no sense. Like you have to have him start beating down because clearly we already know how this is gonna play out long term. Ray's going to end up winning the rivalry in the end. He's going to be the one that wins the match at the end. But what he's going to have to do in the meantime is Escobar has to beat down everybody in the LWO and then get to Ray. And then Ray gets to be the hero. Oh, you see, he beat Escobar. Yay. Bye. Okay. But um, <laughs> moving on here, we have got for the Women's WWE World Championship. Muscle Mommy herself, Rhea Ripley versus Zoe Stark. Daryl, how you feel about this match? Second bathroom break. Uh, we already know Rhea Ripley's going to win, so we'll call it a day. We're not. We, this is not convincing. I wish it. I wish I had a convincing Raw title match at this. A women's title match at this point. I'm sorry. There's going to be a lot of bathroom breaks in this in this card. That's all. It's probably like two cards. It's probably like three matches at best that I actually will watch. Three badges at best. We haven't got to them yet, but we're we're getting to them. That's all I'm saying. Mace, how you feeling? Well, I got Rhea in a wash. I think I think we're just we're building up. We got we got to build up her dubs. You know what I'm saying? This is just another dub on the ledger. So 
slight yeah, word. I, I, I don't disagree. Don't disagree with all. Hey, muscle mommies all day. What's happening? Shout out to y'all. Uh, <laughs> but moving forward here, we've got one more singles match here, and that is for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. We have the Ring General Gunther versus the Miz. Daryl, how you feeling? This is a conspiracy match. What? What does that mean? Nah, because what does there's. That even mean? You have to let me explain. You gotta let me explain, please. Let me explain. The only reason I'm saying this is a conspiracy match is because, um, you know how WWE likes to break other people's records that are in AEW, and if the Miz wins this, he beat nine Intercontinental champion for the like ninth time and he would be tied with jericho so it's like do we give it to the miz and get gunther off the whole role so we can start up him with brock lesnar type stuff right now or are we just gonna keep it on gunther for the time being that's what it really is at this point for me i would want the miz to win you know because you know Right now, he's, they just they just converted him to a face within like a week. So I own two weeks. I don't understand that. Ah, uh, no, no. They this conversion's been happening for a minute here, bro. Like pretty much since he had his rivalry with Seth, they've been slowly converting him towards being a face. They've just you mean, been you mean out. You mean L.A. Knight? Um, yeah, I'm sorry, L.A. Knight. My fault. Yeah, I, I man, how did I go all the way back to the Seth one? Ooh, I'm losing my mind a little bit. Um. But if you look, they've done a lot of like real comedic stuff with him since then. And so they've been slowly softening the Miz for you to be like, oh, okay, he can be a face. Uh, but for me, I'm going to have to go with the ring general. I don't see them wanting um, the Miz to actually be the one to break the streak that Gunther's been on. Whoever they end up giving the title to, I think it's going to be a value move for that person. It's going to be one of those, you know, uh, uh, a feather in their cap, you know, for lack of better terms. But Mace, how you feeling about this match? Um, with your I boy, see, the Gunther. <laughs> I can see it going either way, honestly, because currently we don't have anybody for the next like brock rivalry you know what i'm saying and you you could easily throw the loser of this match into a rivalry rivalry with brock because not miz it won't be convincing how okay you you think for a sec mace let's, let's talk about it for real he is right bro the miz and brock lesnar Come on, baby. I think I think if they're trying to throw Miz in into being a face, I mean, that's like saying that, that's isn't, like saying isn't that, Eva, that's like saying Eva Marie is going to beat Nia Jax. That's what no, you're because doing right because now. think about it though. While Brock Lesnar Whoa, is don't disrespect the Miz like that. While Brock Lesnar is, is, is he's a, he's a popular character, you could classify him technically as a heel, right? Stop. And I mean, all it takes is one scummy Brock move and one heroic Miz moment, and there you go. But anyways, I believe Gunter is gonna get this dub. Um, maybe, like I said, maybe it's it's either a setup for somebody else to beat him, or it's a setup for. Gunter to um, finally take a, a leap into the um, WWE title picture. Because, I mean, eventually you just can't stay as the Intercontinental Champion. Like, eventually you're going to have to either get knocked down or you're going to have to transcend your status. I'll be honest with you. What I'm really, really hoping for tonight is for Gunther to smash the Miz, really go out there and embarrass him. And get on the mic, start talking trash, and then all of a sudden you hear, "Look in my eyes, what do you see?" <laughs> 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 then CM Punk comes out, 
and they start a rivalry. That's what your boy is hoping for. I said hopes, Daryl. You ain't got to look at me like that. I said I'm hoping. I didn't say it's going to happen. I said I'm hopeful. I'm hoping, baby. That's it. Can I hope? So you want CM Punk to come out the Gunther and not the Shinsuke. Yes. I think he would do better matches with Gunther. Him and Shinsuke, that's like you know you're basically two of the same. You're taking, hey, Japanese CM Punk, American CM Punk. Let's put them together in the same <laughs> ring. I'm good on that, bro. Like, I'm cool, dog. I don't want that. I want some, like, dynamics. And I think him and Gunther can work well together. You know what? After you just said that, I don't want to see CM Punk. I hope he's not here. Oh, wow. Oh, such a hater. There's no there's no hate in my heart. The only hate that is in between the three of us is the one person that told me a man was not returning and he's returning tonight. Go ahead. Look, man. Go, the, report, go ahead. the reports, the reports are saying that it's not looking good, but there's also reports saying this look good. So I don't know, baby. It's up in the air. We'll see what happens. It's Chicago. Nope. Nope. I need you to apologize to me. I ain't apologizing for shit. <laughs> you gonna apologize. For, for, for what? You ain't right. This, this, what am I apologizing for, nigga? You ain't right? What, what have you proven me wrong on? What am I apologizing for? That Brandy Orton is coming back, and you said... Oh, okay. All right, yeah. Back. I'll admit it. Okay. You were right. Randy Orton is coming back here at Survivor Series. You called it after calling it at like four or five straight pay-per-views. Hey, it doesn't matter. Okay, you were right. I was wrong. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> Is that what you wanted? Yep. So, <laughs> it doesn't matter how many times he was wrong as long as you're right. Yeah, you that, that don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> You've been saying it for like every pay-per-view hey, since you know, Randy's been out, know, basically. If you keep putting your money on 24 Black, eventually it's going to hit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, eventually it's going to hit. Oh, my God. All right. But uh, moving forward here now, we have got the – we'll start with the the men's war game, okay? Since Daryl brought up his boy, Randy Orton, tonight in the men's war games match, you have got the team of Cody Rhodes. Seth Rollins, Jay Uso, Sami Zayn, and Randy Orton versus the Judgment Day. For those that don't know, who consists of Damian Priest, Ben Baylor, Dominic Mysterio, uh, and now the newest member, J.D. McDonough, and their partner, Drew McIntyre. Daryl, how you feeling about this match? And how does it end up going down? This shit. This. Let me just get out in front, though, before you actually ask. Let me get out in front. Randy Orton's turning on Cody Rhodes tonight. I'm just going to say it now. But go ahead, Daryl. I, I had to preempt him, Mace. I know he might try and hit me with it. I had to preempt him. I ain't going to let him do it to me. Mm -mm. And Damian Priest is exiting the Judgment Day tonight, too. Mm. If anybody's exiting the Judgment Day, it's going to be Finn Balor. For what? Because can't you see Priest has value to the group? What value does Finn Baylor have? They can replace him as a tag team person. I don't know. But uh, let's see. Um, the faces are going to win tonight with a slight dash of Randy Orton turning on Cody. Yeah, I understand that. But the same thing, like, I'm so tired. If, if Randy turns on Cody, who's going to turn on the other team? Because there has to be an equal. Spo spoiler, spoiler alert! Judgment Day and Drew McIntyre is winning tonight. They're winning tonight because Randy Orton's gonna screw over the whole other team. We, this we we can his see his name that, is like, the Viper. When do we, we start I smell hey, vipers? We smell that betrayal. You can smell that betrayal a mile away. 
Oh, as soon as what, he brought up what, what, you, it, what is it called? Legacy or whatever? It was like, oh nigga, oh yeah, he for sure is hitting him with a fresh RKO, baby. It's over. Listen, bro, once once you gave me the team and then you had Randy Orton at the end of it, I was like, Yeah, brother, he's I can smell the deceit a mile away. <laughs> that smells like treachery. <laughs> Daryl, how's it going down tonight? Judgment Day losing. I'm sorry. I don't believe that Judgment Day is going to win a war games. Like, I'm tired. Everybody's tired of this Judgment Day nonsense at this point. Like, it's really okay. But, but like I said, though, if if Randy Orton turns on Cody Rhodes, who on the other team is going to turn the tide back if you assume Judgment Day is losing? Because that's a tide changing shift right there. Like, if Randy Orton turns, you assume that their team is going to lose. So who on the other end is going to then counteract the treachery? I said Priest. I already said this already. So there's a double betrayal? In why, why is it going to be Priest? What what has led you to believe? Because Judgment Day wow. Judgment Day have been saying for the longest that their whole team is equal. And, Ju and Priest does not see everybody as equal. He is the leader. There is no equal. Okay, but... At some point, Judgment Day was going to have to actually have a leader, like a certified leader. Somebody you couldn't – that group could not continue to exist in the way that it does without eventually having a leader. They could play it out to see who the fans respond to and how it ends up shaking out and then decide the leader later, but you have to get to a point where you got a leader at some point. They're not going to make no Rhea no darn leader, and that's what he's not going to hope for. He's not going to listen to Rita about freaking being a – the whole calls the shots and everything like he's not going to do that. Well, there's a chance he's been listening so far. Mm. Okay, and we'll he's see. Got what the money in the bank because he listened. I don't know, man. I don't know. Nope. All right, so Mace, who do you got winning this then tonight? I got Judgment Day. And uh, Drew, brother, well, like I said, <laughs> like like I said, if the deceit is coming from Randy, which we know it is, like, ain't no way he's gonna play a clean game. That's all I'm saying. We know this. You can't trust nobody with a bald head. You can't. That's so you can't trust the Stone Cold. Then is what you're saying. He, no, you can trust Stone Cold for the simple fact that you know, <laughs> you know, eventually you're going to catch that stunner. You know it. You go into <laughs> the situation knowing he might celebrate with you after the dub, but. Are yeah, you going to end up like Pat? You're catching the stunner after. You know this. <laughs> and, and, and you should just expect it. Like, you know, we're going to get this dub. Everything going to go well. I'm going to catch this stunner. After a couple beers, it's going to be all right. I promise you this, fellas. If I get famous enough at some point where WWE is willing to work me, I'm having Stone Cold stun me and pour a beer on me. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I, and I'm going to take it just like The Rock. I'm going to flip back, push myself up in the air, almost springboard <laughs> myself out the ring. <laughs> Ah, uh, I'm not gonna take it like Vince McMahon, where I look like I'm dying as I'm getting this stone cold stunner. All right. Vince looked like it. a dying cow, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was done for. My man looked like he got tipped over and couldn't get up. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! All right, well, moving forward here, that we have got the women's war games match, which consists of the team of Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair. Becky Lynch, Shotzi versus Damage Control, who now consists of Bailey, EO Sky, Kari Sane, and Asuka. Daryl, how is this match going down? I ain't taking this match seriously. There's all there's all little uh, Easter eggs of. Oh, you said this about me and betrayal over here. And betray Someone's getting betrayed. I ain't going to put a lot of effort and knowledge on some SmackDown 
rivalry group that don't make no darn sense. I ain't, I ain't putting nothing into it. This might be bathroom break number three. Half of the match. Who knows? As soon as I see one bad gimmick goes around, like try to set up, I do like a little nice little NXT chair uh, table table slot going on in the game in the actual match. I'm turn. I'm probably just gonna walk away. I like order some food or something. That's how I take it. Mace, how you feeling? This is um Charlotte's redemption song. Stop it. She at at some point she's gonna put the team on her back and get this dub. You know, you we all knew that at some point Charlotte was gonna have to start her rise, right? Like we know it. We 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 understand that she's gonna get the title back. She's gonna do the whole X thirty time, whatever the case may be. She's gonna eventually make it back into the title picture, and it starts tonight. We know it. We don't have to like it, but we know it. So I'm saying, Charlotte's gonna at some point put the team on her back, get the dub. And now she can she can probably start some up with somebody after talk a little bit of noise because she got the dub. We know we know what happened. We were having a nice conversation about wrestling, and then you had to go and do that bullshit, didn't you, Mace? Didn't no, you? We, we, we didn't know what was gonna happen, why, bro. Why we you gotta know, ruin my time about talking about wrestling? Know, why are you doing we that? We know it's gonna happen, though. We don't have no, to like it. I, I'm I'm not accepting it. Nope. You know what's gonna happen tonight? Damage control is winning, and they about to kick Bailey out the group tonight. That's what's about to happen. How you yeah, like that? Brother? I'm telling you, ba dog. Bailey getting the boot tonight. And Charlotte, damage control still going to get the dub. At some point, Charlotte has to start her rise again. We know this. No, she doesn't. And it's starting tonight. We know this. She she's, not just gonna to, be, she's not just going to be another member of the roster. At some point, they are going to let Charlotte separate herself again. Because that's just how that's just, we know this. They don't have to do it, Mace. They will not a do it. We know it's, it's not like happen. it's oxygen. They don't have to do this. We know it's going to happen. We know this. Is it you? May, there is. might you, the the little piece of you that knows it's going to happen. You might have like thrown him in the little padded room with a little light straight jacket, and you're not listening to what he's saying, but you know he's in there. You know it's going to happen. Hey, Mace, my man Stimpy said, hey, appreciate you, you and Quasi, man, being in there tonight. Hey, Quasi, for real, dog, we really appreciate you. You always showed us love. But Stimpy, my man said, when you were talking about bald people, he said, damn, that sounded personal. No baldies? And he said, Mr. Clean included, too? <laughs> of course you can't trust Mr. Clean, bro. You can't trust no bald-headed buff dude in your house. Where's your wife at? Hmm? Huh? Getting waxed on and waxed off. Yeah, you can't trust no ball, dude. In your house? Ain't no way. Ain't no way. You definitely can't do that. <laughs> you, this man yeah. said, Mr. Queen, you definitely Wallet. can't do that, bro. You At this point, bro, throw your marriage away because Mr. you ain't married to your <laughs> wife no more. Mr. Queen is. Can't trust no bald dude. No bald. Not only is Mr. Clean bald and buff, he's in a he's in a white tee and he's buff. Well, this man talking about how he can't trust bald people. We can't trust these cowboys people either. You see how the crap he's coming out of his mouth? It is it's just like walking trash at this point. Walking trash. But y'all can't even beat a trash team. So I don't even understand. Y'all, y'all getting excited over nothing. You know, I can't wait to get to football. That's what I'm waiting on right now. Can't wait. Well, that's where we're going next here because Daryl Daryl can't help himself. He can't, um, brother. He can't, he can't even let me do it. He can't even let me set it up. He just got to go throw a shot at you today, man. See, he, he, hey, for those that don't know, before we even started the stream, my man been firing shots all day. <laughs> and Mason about to go in all, all day. I don't know why. I don't know. Why. I don't know. He, you know. You know why he has to turn his attention onto me because none of his sports franchises are doing well, and and his Messiah Tom Brady is sitting at home, so he has he has nothing. He has nothing positive going for him in the sports world. 
So all he has to do is cast a shadow on other people. Here, line. Yeah, I, I told every Patriots fan that I told, everyone that I knew, I told you simply, at some point, baby, that ride's going to be over, and you're going to be right back to where you used to be. And what are the Patriots right now, Mace? Right back to what they used to be. Look, we have shown love on Bill Be for Bill Belichick for years on this show. But I'm going to tell you right now, if Bill Belichick loses his job as the coach, it's because Bill Belichick, the GM, got him fired. Because his roster moves have been atrocious. Okay. They've been awful. Awful, awful, awful. Um, I mean, let's just talk about J.C. Jackson. That That's a glaring example. <laughs> you, you're never that man had like two good games for them, but now he can't even get on the field. They told him to stay at the <laughs> – <laughs> he's inactive. He's a healthy scratch. <laughs> Bruh. So th think about that, right? So J.C. Jackson, they paid him all that money. And he stinks. They've let other guys walk out of the door that were good. They were like, no, nah, we're not going to pay you. So, and then on top of that, yeah, I mean, if we go over New England Patriots draft history, I just had this up. I closed out the wrong window. Give me a second here. It is uh, pretty, pretty terrible. Okay. So, go. we'll go back to what year did Tom Brady leave there, Mace? Um, wasn't it 20? Yeah, it was COVID. Okay. It was COVID year. All right, so we'll start it. We'll start at 2016, right? Mm -hmm. So the build up to Tom Brady leaving. These are the draft picks: Cyrus Jones, Joe Thune, Jacob uh, Jacoby Brissett, Vincent Valentine, Malcolm Mitchell, Camus Gruzer Hill, Ellen Ellen Don Roberts, Ted Carreras. Derek uh, Rivers, Antonio Garcia, Dietrich Wise Jr., Connor McDermott, Isaiah Wynn, Sonny Mitchell, uh, Sonny Michelle, excuse me, Duke Dawson, Jawan Bentley, Christian Sam, Braxton Berrios, Danny Etling, Kian Crossan, and some other guy, Ryan Izzo. Then Nikhil Harry, <laughs> Joe, Joe Jawan Williams, Chase Winovich, Damian Harris, Yadni Kajust, Hajati Froholt, Jarrett Stidham, <laughs> uh, Byron Coward, Jacob Bailey, uh, Kyle Duggar, Josh Uche, uh, Anthony Jennings, Devin Asai, Dalton Keene, Justin Rowers, Michael Anowino, Justin Heron, Cash Malua. Then you got Matt Jones, Christian Barmore, Roddy Perkins, Radmar Stevenson, Cameron McGrone, Joshua Bledsoe, William Sherman, Trey Nixon. Then Cole Strange, Tyquan Thornton, Marcus Jones, Jack Jones, Pierre Strong, ba <laughs> Bailey Zapp, Kevin Harris, Sam Roberts, Chasen Hyens, Andrew Stuber. And then last year, Christian Gonzalez, Keon White, Marty Mapu, Jake Andrews, Chad Rayland, or Ryland. City So, Antonio Maffi, Kayshawn Boot, Bryce Beringer, um, Demario Douglas, Amar Speed, and I, Isaiah Bolden. Mace, how many all pros did I just name? What, just Thune? And he was, <laughs> and, was, and Thune That's wasn't it. even an all pro for that team. Nope. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, just Thune? How many, how many Pro Bowl players did I name? I mean, we we expect we expected <laughs> Gonzalez to be somewhere around there before the shoulder injury. Um, Josh Uchi is I, <laughs> but but um, Bill been striking out for a while. Yeah, and like that's what I mean. So if Bill gets fired, Patriots fans, it's because Bill Belichick, the GM, got Bill Belichick the coach fired because that, that look. We just went through that is one, seven two, drafts, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drafts. We went through eight drafts, and there's like one, one to three players that were worth a damn out of all of those guys. 
That's terrible. And one of those guys doesn't even play for your team anymore. Right? The best, <laughs> player, out of that. The best player you named in that in, in, in that entire process was Joe Thune, and he not even on the team. So, Patriot fans, I uh, hate to tell y'all, but it's uh, back to the light, baby, back to reality, because who Bill Belichick, the GM, has sold y'all. <laughs> he is so it would remember and can't nobody else say oh it was somebody else making the decisions hell no nah. all this time we've been giving bill the credit why we why he winning we're gonna give his ass the credit why they losing too but moving forward here we might as well get to the games that were from this week that have already started going from thanksgiving and of course we had the traditional Lions game where the Lions decided to do what, Mace? What 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 uh what what coach 30 be saying that the teams be doing? What them do you down do? your leg? That's what they decided to do against the Packers after having a great rallying performance against the Bears uh on Sunday, where Jared Goff was looking terrible on Sunday. Um it's probably a game they should have lost. I think there were like about three or four moments in that game where the Bears just didn't convert when they needed to, didn't do what they needed to do to make the game theirs. But Jared Goff continued to have his struggles then against the Packers, not looking good at all. Mace, how are you feeling about this Lions team? I know this is our ITC team. We we ride with the man Campbell's right here, but I'm going to tell you, these last two games that I've seen from uh, Jared Goff are very, very, very alarming to me. Yeah, man. Um, Jared Goff for like the last – what season and a half basically last like 16 games for the for detroit has taken care of the ball and then like these last two he's like you know what y'all got it i'm tired of being good y'all got it and that's basically what it's come down to it's like he's just decided that either either he's overconfident which which you know hey you gotta knock that out real quick hey get that out, out your system now because he's these these rash of turnovers, bro. You can't have you can't have this going into the um, second half of your season. You can't start now. Start turning the ball over once your offense is com is finally healthy. I mean, you finally got a full complement of uh, receivers and running backs on that team. It's really it really comes down to golf at this point because we know we know. St. Brown, JMO, um, Montgomery Gibbs, Laporte, you know they're all gonna they're all gonna make something happen with the ball in their hands. And you know the offensive line is gonna give him some solid protection, some solid push in the run game. It was just comes down to golf at this point. And uh, he can't he can't go out there and play like he did these last two games and, and expect him to have any success in the playoffs. Yeah, uh for me. I, the thing that's so alarming about it is that, well, it's, it's twofold thing. First point is, the season has proven without a shadow of a doubt, Jared Goff is basically a little bit better of a Kirk Cousins. They're basically the same guy. He just has a little bit better physical tools, right? Exact same quarterback, though. If you make them move their feet at all, if you make them a little bit uncomfortable in that pocket, you're you're going to get them to throw you some balls. When they're rolling, though, we know just like Kurt, dude, he can be red hot. He'll be hitting everything, right? We, we know that that's the the upside that you can get. But when you need him to start actually making the plays that you need to as a good as a good team and a team that's going to be a playoff team that could possibly compete, that's where Jared Goff, I think, is beginning to let this team down because teams are figuring out, hey, wait a minute. The only one of their wide receivers that really gets some separation is Amon Ra. Okay. We know Jared Goff loves to throw a little porter, so we're going to stop Amon Ra and Laporta, and we're going to dare one of these other guys to beat us. Nobody else has done it yet. So I'm starting to wonder how this season is going to finish up for the Lions because, man, these last two games, look, I understand they beat the Bears, but, boy, they looked terrible doing it it was more so the bears grasping 
defeat from the jaws of victory than it was the Lions came and took that game. So I, I'm worried about the boys, man, son. And, man, Campbell's got me nervous, dog. It's like, ah, don't do this to me, man, Campbell's. I had something to root for this year. Don't do this to me. But moving forward here, I don't think we need to really waste time talking about the Seahawks and the Niners. I mean, the Niners just bopped their head. The Seahawks seem to be trending in the wrong direction, and it's not <laughs> its not good right now. Pete, we was giving you love, Pete, but you're going to have to – Come on, baby. Well, I think I think we're finally starting to see the lack of talent in their defensive front seven actually like rear its ugly head. Because a lot of times they start the game off playing from behind. So you can't ever get that running game going. And another team in that top 10 that could have used Jalen Carter, but we're like, nah, we're gonna go corner. I, and look, that's no that's no insult to Witherspoon because he has been everything you would want him to be. But like you said, they got nothing up front. They had a I, can chance. Can you name they me one a... player, Mace, on their front that is worth a damn? Can you name me one? I mean, Leonard Williams, but he's only a run stuffer. He gives Bro, we, no, we're not even, no, Leonard Williams doesn't even count. Let's talk about before, before they brought in Leonard Williams. Was there anybody on that no. roster that you could even name? No. As far as that line goes. No, not at all. Terrible. They're terrible. Up front, they're going to have to get that right. But uh, we saw also the Dolphins beat the crap out of the lowly Jets. We know what the Jets are. I don't think we need to spend much more time talking about that. They've, I mean, the only thing that's relevant that's happened with the Jets in the past couple of weeks is they finally figured out what the rest of us have already known, which is we got to get this Zach Wilson dude the hell out of here. We, we got to get him out of here, man. This guy stinks. The craziest thing about all of this is the fact that they knew Zach Wilson was bad and they still decide to run him out there. Like y'all knew Zach Wilson was bad and y'all and and y'all basically had an entire season to address your quarterback position after Aaron Rodgers just went out. Like y'all knew Zach Wilson was bad. Y'all knew this. And and uh, I'm I don't want to hear none of that. You don't want to crush a young quarterback's confidence. I don't want to hear none of that, man. You get paid to be good at your job and you're not. I don't care if you're still on a rookie contract. You're not good at your job. Why do you still why why do they even continue to turn the wheels on that? You're muted. Because people just don't really want to admit when they're wrong. That's all it comes down to, Mace. Very, very simple. Um, that new regime doesn't want to admit that they blew it with, with Zach Wilson. Because realistically, they should have had Justin Fields. They should have. Justin Fields was the most successful quarterback out of all those quarterbacks in the draft, and teams were finding – ways to just poop on him over and over leading that draft process right now we, listen, out. If, Justin if, Fields has shown he can be special Zach Wilson shows that he can stinks if the Jets were to have drafted Justin Fields they would be running away with that division hey Mace why would they be running away with it is there a certain team in there that has seemed kind of I don't know Fraudulent mace. Hmm? Is there a certain team in that division that they, they got a whole lot of hype? And now it's seeming like Jerome was right when he called them for rods. Hmm? Is there a certain team, Mace? We ain't gonna sit here and talk about who's right or wrong. No, 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 talk, we, we, no, 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 talk no, about I, what we're gonna <laughs> talk about is the facts right now, and hey, the Bills hey. just can't seem to get out of their own way. So that would make them what then? If they got all the hype talking about that they were maybe as good as Kansas City, Baltimore, um, Cincinnati, if they haven't lived up to it, Mace, what does that make them? You know, they just can't get out of their way, man. They just got some internal things they need to work on. You know, maybe maybe that quarterback can um, not turn the ball over so much. 
maybe they could find a way to run the ball. You know, you, they might be all right. But, Mace, you know, answer you know, the question. What does it make them, Mace? Can't. They can't get out of their own way. That It makes them a team with internal strife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> all right, DJ. All right. Oh, man, what this guy right here, man. This guy, let me tell you about him. Um, look, man, you cannot, you cannot say it, Mace, all you want, but I'm going to say it again. The Buffalo Bills are frauds, frauds, phonies, fakes. Don't believe them. They're an illusion. Well, I won't, yeah. I won't say that for, for one They're simple. They're a mirage. I won't say that for the simple fact that over the, no, no, hear me out. Hear me out. Over the past like three seasons or so, I think in like the last maybe four to five weeks of the season, uh, Josh Allen's the Bills record is like 16 and three, 16 and two. Like they don't lose late in the season. It, it for, for whatever reason, they can't get it right to them last X amount of weeks. So that, that's the reason why I can't call them frauds because they, they do win leading up to the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? They do handle their business whenever they need to. They're frauds. I said, I can't call them that, bro, because their their record sa says otherwise. It's but just Mace, they, their I quarterback know, but gives, I keeps the other teams in the game. Well, Mace, if he, if, if he got all that hype, we were told he's better than Lamar. Who said that? Hey, hey, that's what everybody was saying. They said they were they were telling us he's better than Lamar. I don't know. Whoever he's on the level they, with Patrick Mahomes. Whoever fixed their and lips not his to team say six them, and five. To whoever fixed their lips to say those two things. Mace, don't act like we weren't hearing it. That like and that's all. Oh, okay, true. We, we were we were in fact hearing it. But you know, the real ones was out there always still talking about the amount of turnovers that he commits. And we all we all I heard for a whole fucking off season. Oh, if they just changed the rules, the Bills would have a chance to win. Then they changed the damn overtime rules, and then the Bills got boat raced at home by the Bills in the playoffs. But they now frauds. <laughs> they are the biggest frauds I've ever seen, dog. Biggest frauds ever. Because they're not gonna win. They, they're not gonna win a championship. They're not gonna do it. Not with this, not with this coaching regime, not with this core of players. I'm saying it now. They will not even reach a Super Bowl. And you know why? Because that dude you was just talking about who turns the ball over all the time. Well, you, that, that's a, a, you can believe in that mirage that happened last week, but I ain't believing in that bullshit because I know better. That's a small like I said, that's why I'll I can't call it well, size. that's the reason why I can't call it Mirage because like they, they have a track record of being good late in the season. Yeah, but they also have a track record of being good earlier in the season, too. They usually don't poop down this many games this this early in the year. Are you kidding me? Usually they're getting the five losses by like the end of the season. This is what's happened in the past like three seasons of them. They're, they'll get to five like by the end of the year. They're already at five. They're six and five. They're not good. They're frauds. Frauds. Don't care what any of y'all say. But Getting to what I know Mace has been waiting for here. Possibly the hottest team in football, the Dallas Cowboys came out and had another dominating performance against another bad team. To their credit, and you can only beat who is on your schedule, so you know I don't try and knock people too much for beating bad teams, but it does have to be said that when the Cowboys have played against uh, teams that have a better a winning record this year, they are they lost, right? But everybody else, the Cowboys have pretty much said, ba bop, ba bop, ba bop. So, Mace, how do you feel after watching the Cowboys put in another dominant performance and Mr. Bland setting the single season pick six record? Um. So, like you said, you can only play who's in front of you. So you 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 hope that your team blows out bad teams, but we know in the NFL that really doesn't happen. I mean, 
sometimes bad teams keep games close. And, you know, you, your team may still squeak a win out, you know what I'm saying? But two-handedly beat bad teams is only a good thing for your team. So I don't see how that's – I don't see how that's necessarily a knock because – Losing a game to a to a team that with a losing record early in the season, that team may squeak out a ten and seven, or a, you know what I'm saying, or like a nine and eight. You know, by the end of the season, so that that number, I don't like to look at that until the season's over with. Because, like you said, like the Rams could very well end up nine and nine and eight by the end of the year. They probably still miss the playoffs and all that, but like they, I think they're a better team than what they've shown. And I think that – so that could be another win versus a team with a winning winning record by the end of the season. So that's why I don't like to look at that stat in particular. All I can do is just look at what's happening on the field. And if you're beating bad teams by a lot, not a lot of teams are just blowing people out. Mace, you, you guys have played two good teams this year, and you lost to both of them. What are you talking about? You're tap dancing you, so hard you, right like, now. Seriously, what the hell are you talking about? You uh, you're, that whole that whole little soliloquy you just gave was such nonsense, bro. Y'all beat up on these bad teams, but the fact of the matter is, when you played two good teams, y'all niggas lost. Y'all can't do that same performance to them. And, and one and one of those teams said, "Bop, bop, bop, bop." On top of y'all head. And what did I tell you? As I told you, bro, the 49ers just for whatever reason have our number. Have I not said that? Have I not said that? But bro, trying to sell have us. Have I on not the Rams said that being, though? But 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 trying to sell us on the Rams being better than what they are, what their record says they are. Okay, okay, but at the, okay, the Rams but at the are a terrible season, team. Bro, Stop listen, that. Listen, you know, at the end of the season, if they have a winning record, all they're of a sudden going we, to. At, at the end of the season, they're what five and six or six and five or five and six right now? Bro. And how's it gonna get better? Who knows? But that's what I'm saying, though, dog. Like you, like that's kind of. But hey, explain to me what 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 in your mind makes the Rams a better team than what their record says. I'm not saying they're a better team than what their record says, but if they in, but, that's but listen, what you're trying to sell they, us on. In, their record they says the se- they're under 500 team. If they end the season at nine and seven, they will have a winning record, right? Then so Dallas will have somehow. Hold on. With the, if you don't, if you if you don't even have. Full belief in that a team is actually better than what they have shown. How can you sit here and tell us that they might have a winning record by okay, the end but, of the season because they're five and six right now? Games that's left that's for, there's enough games left for them to win and have a winning record. Is there not? Yes, but are they going to Mace? Who if you knows? had to pick, if you had to put your money on the line right I don't now, know would you the, say I don't that know the, Rams what the rest is, of the Rams schedule looks like? But how are you so convinced? I'm not convinced. I'm just saying, though, that saying that that what saying that Dallas team? hasn't won against a team with a winning record might sound different at the end of the season, given how other teams play that they've already beat without winning records. That's all I've said. So, all right, all right. So let's go. Rams got Cardinals, Browns, Ravens, Commanders, Saints, Giants, and Niners. They're not finishing with a winning record. Bro, they could they lose three of those games. Three of those sound like for sure losses. Yeah, they're not finishing with the winning record, bro. But we don't know that. That's what I'm saying, though, dog. Like, we can't sit here and, like, at the end of the season, you can say that without a, with a definitive. Without a definitive so I can't say the Giants stink right now? Well, they do stink. Okay, then. So what the hell are we talking about? We know what these teams are at this point in the year. Why are you trying to use this as an excuse? To I'm be not, like, bro. Well, I'm, it not might look it's different. An, I'm not saying it's an excuse. It's a it's a fact. The Rams could end up with a winning record, and now all of a sudden, Dallas has beaten a team with a winning record. But we can't talk about that. Because it's Bruh. not cool to say that they beat somebody they with a winning record. But they haven't beaten anybody with a winning they've record only, yet. They've only played what? Three teams with two teams with a winning record, and they haven't beat either of them. They've only played two out of eleven games, and they lost both of them joints. So what? So y'all, hey, so y'all are front runners. You can beat up on the bad teams, but when you play a team that's worth the damn, all of a sudden it's like, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, no, hear me out. If we look at comparative opponents, 
Dallas is blowing out the same teams that the Eagles are squeaking by, but some, but it's all, it's all cool. It's all cool because the Eagles are winning, right? Right. You find ways to win, right? Okay, but but uh, my point exactly. It's all cool. Yeah, it's Cowboys all cool do. when it's all cool when Philadelphia squeaks do, by bad teams, but when Dallas blows out a bad team, all of a sudden they can't be the winning team. I don't want to hear that nonsense. Y'all oh. barely beat the damn Chargers, brother. Y'all squeaked by them. Eagles squeaked by by the Commanders. But I'm saying you sitting here trying to knock them for it, but brother, y'all barely beat the damn I'm not Chargers. Knocking, I'm not knocking anybody for it, but I'm just saying that narrative is different. Like if we blow out a bad team, oh, we're front runners. We just beating up on bad teams. But when another good team squeaks by a bad team, they still found a way to win. Y'all just All I know. At that, that's, point, that's 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 what it is right now. It, Eagles find a way to win. Dallas beat so, up on bad so teams. Let me ask you something. So why y'all lose to the Cardinals then? I told you what that game was. Did I not? Did I did I not sit, did I not just, sit up, did I not sit up on this show and tell you I did not feel good about that game? On top of the fact that Arizona's like eight and two in their last 10 games against Dallas, for whatever reason, we don't beat them. So y'all lost to the Cardinals, barely squeaked by the Chargers. But yet everybody that Dallas has blown out. Philly barely squeaks by, but that's all good because they've only lost one game this year. Cool. Cool. I don't we don't have to have this conversation no more because we know what it is. Dallas are front runners beating up on bad teams. Philly can win by three points against everybody they play, but somehow they're great. Y'all reach cool. the championship? Cool. NFC championship. So so wait, wait, here we go. Here we go. I got you right here. Why are you saying all of that? Philly against teams with winning records this year beat the Vikings 34 28. Where, if you remember that game, they were in control of that game for like the whole damn thing. Okay. Um, we have got Eagles versus Dolphins 31 17. Bob Day head there. Eagles versus Cowboys. B Shaw found a way to win 28 23. Eagles versus Chiefs. 21-17. They find ways to win. They may not be blowing teams out, but they always find a way to win. So, like, yeah, yeah, bro, you can sit here and try and, and run the slick, slick stuff. I'm not saying they, they're slick. barely winning these bro, that's, games. That's but it's the, like, bro, if you it's look a significant at the teams difference they, when your team consistently is finding a way to win. If you look at the everybody. teams that the Eagles and Cowboys have both played this year, Dallas is blowing out those teams while Philly is squeaking by, but that's cool. What does that mean, though, dude? What, what, what does what that is, even mean? Okay, so what, what does, does that mean? Playing, so what does only playing? I'm, ask, I'm, I'm asking teams. you, what does it mean that y'all blew out these teams that Philly still beat them to? What does that mean? So what does it mean when we've only played two teams with a ring, winning record this year? And you lost, and lost both. both of those. When we, If you look at the rest of our schedule outside of outside of who? Outside of maybe what? We got the commanders one more time? Rest of your schedule is you got the Seahawks next week, mm -hmm. then you got Eagles, mm -hmm. then Bills, Bills Dolphins, Dolphins, Lions, Commanders to end the season. Okay, so so how many of those games versus winning teams do we have to win before all of a sudden we don't just beat up on bad teams? Y'all better come out of there with a winning record because y'all are playing one, two, three, four teams with winning records. To end the season, because the Seahawks are under five hundred now, right after they lost that last one, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe so, or they might be. No, they're no Seahawks are above five hundred still. So you're playing five oh, teams. So yeah, five hey, of our last yeah. six teams are ver so. If, so so how many of those teams have it, to win? Y'all better come. Y'all better how come out that joint four and one. Y'all better play them four. Y'all better play them five teams and come out of there four and one. It's okay. that simple for me, because that could because it's very very easy for a super talented team like Cowboys to beat up on these bad teams. But I need to see them actually beat these good but the teams. Eagles before are super I'm talented give them credit. not beating up on bad teams. And they find and they find a way to win. But and that's week, that's my whole part in this whole The Cowboys argument. do but the Cowboys yeah. do not find a way to win, Mace. That's the point. Like hey, we could talk about who has a bigger scoring margin and all that shit. But at the end of the day, the one thing that matters, the one stat at the end of the day that matters the most is did you win the damn game? Doesn't matter if it's pretty. It doesn't matter if it's pretty or ugly, right? It matters that you win. 
So, so the Eagles be so grinding not, people out. So we're not going to hold the Eagles accountable for beating bad teams by eight points when they when they are obviously more talented than those bad teams. You hold the team. Hey, is the NFL not the league where it's where it said any given Sunday you can lose and yet they still find ways to win? Okay, so, is there no so, under, so, under, that? so under that same moniker, if you blow out a bad team, does that not say anything about how well your team plays? Honest. I'll be honest with you. Blowing out bad teams is never anything impressive for me. No matter who you are, it doesn't matter. But you blowing out a bad so, team. So what any, does that mean? Any, any given Sunday, a bad team can beat a good team. But when the bad, but when the good team Bro, blows the Ra- out the bad on, team, Mace, that doesn't mean anything. Mace, the Ravens won a damn Super Bowl with a with a margin of victory of like seven point six points with the defense when they were literally playing every game super close. Just like the Eagles do, every game was super close. We can't even that compare mean, the it, just because just because the, the game is close Ravens doesn't mean that you're brother. We can't even just do because. That. But my point to you is this: is that that whole margin of victory shit doesn't matter really. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you consistently find ways to win. Which, hey, when the Cowboys have played good teams this year, that is not what they have done. That's only two teams that we have. Nigga, that's two. Do we, do we need to go back to the playoffs last year? As soon as y'all played the Niners, what the fuck happened? What happened? Y'all played the no. Niners two years in a row. What happened? Y'all y'all choked. This is my point. When y'all play good teams, bro, y'all don't be beating them. Your division has also been poor outside of the Eagles, so y'all getting basically four free wins a year between the Giants and the damn Commanders. So do the Eagles not get those same four they free wins? They get them wins? same four free wins, too. So, so but, how but, that even? But my, but my point to you is why should I be impressed by, oh, the Cowboys have done this and that when they get to the playoffs? Because we're judging the why Cowboys. Why are you not impressed based, by the Eagles be, squeaking by teams but not impressed they, by Dallas because they, blowing teams they, out? I have seen the Eagles formula work in the playoffs. When have I seen this Dallas formula work in the playoffs? You may there have been other years where y'all had these high flying offense blowing teams out. And what if that resulted in, in the playoffs? That's all I'm saying. Like, I don't want to hear this crap about Dallas being all that good. If they, if dude, we've seen this before. We we've seen this song dance before, baby. But when y'all play good teams, y'all getting mocked. We've only played two good teams. And Eagles beat and us two, by and what, two five opposite- points? And the but two somehow, opportunities your team had to show up for big games this year, they was like, nah, we good, Brian. So losing by five points, all of a sudden, we will never be able to touch the Eagles. We lost by Bro, five. Bro, y'all got bopped by the Niners. Okay, and I told y'all gonna, look, look, at the, at the rate that, that it's that going, was. y'all going to have to go on a and right after playoff that, game, and, and, and that right means you probably got to go to San Fran. And right then after what? that, San Francisco lost three straight games, but that's cool, too, I guess. Right oh, after that, right after oh, that, oh. San Francisco lost three straight games, and Brock Purdy. We can talk about San Francisco. Terrible. We can talk about San Francisco if you want, but we talk about your team. Right I'm now. just saying, though, dog. Like, this, it's everybody wants to hate Dallas. It's not. Hate. I mean, I mean, the Cowboys, bro. The Niners are still eight and three. Cowboys are eight and three, but one team got their head bopped when they played that other team. Yeah, and that That's other team, and that other team lost three straight. After that, okay, and y'all still got as many losses as they do on the season. So, what does that really matter that they lost three straight? Doesn't matter so what how does you it matter? So, what is so what do our three losses matter then? Yo, yo, losses. No, no, it's only the two losses that matter. I don't care about the card, the Cardinals one. You know, I was just play, I was poking at you, but y'all play two good teams, and what happened? Y'all lost both of those games. Your team refuses to find ways to win, they consistently are finding ways to lose. That's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, I will take Dallas over Philly. Hey, man. 49, 49ers is still a little shaky. You know what I'm saying? For whatever reason, they got our number. I'm, I can't. If if you look at our what our last four or five games against them, out even outside of the playoffs, it's still not looking good. But outside outside of San Francisco, I don't see their I don't see Dallas struggling versus anyone. Struggling to get to the playoffs and then losing. How are we struggling to get to the playoffs? Well, Brother, I, look you, at you, you ridiculous. Yeah, you, now, see, bro. see, that's why I can't even take anything he says serious. 
at least at least with you you actually got some a, a stat or a fact behind it he just <laughs> over there he just over there gotta be mad because bill belichick running the patriots into the ground because he ain't got tom brady to save save their life no more hey how much how, how, how much confidence you have for that uh, that eagles uh game how much confidence eagles versus that like in, in dallas eagles dallas yeah how much confidence you have oh extreme confidence how much extreme confidence? Like, how, what level of confidence do you think Dallas is going to win that game? I mean, look at our look, look at no, was no, no. Was, I'm talking win, about win. you. I'm talking about you. Oh, you like I said, alone. extreme confidence. I mean, when was the last time Dallas lost at home against a good team or a bad team? Any team. When was the last time Dallas lost at home? Joe got stats on that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe having confidence that Dallas will go into Philadelphia to beat them was overzealous, but at home, a thousand percent. I don't see I, that. That's for sure, a thousand percent. I'm gonna say Drew probably hit it straight on the head that Philly and Dallas would split the season series, but you know I can't say that. I can't get on. I can't get on here and say nothing ridiculous like that. But at home, that, that's a thousand percent. And, and like I said, brother, like Dallas is on the on the longest home winning streak in the league right now, and it it it, it covers more than one season. Yeah, but y'all problem is going to come down to y'all got to you don't have to win on the road in the playoffs. Yeah, 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 we probably are, but like I said, we're probably not going to because I mean. You look at the rest of Philly schedule. Division. You look at the rest of Philly schedule. They're the only the only test left for them. What is Dallas? Or what they got San Francisco still right? Who you talking about Philly? Philly? Yeah. Um, give me one second. I will tell you. I just clicked off of their schedule. One second. Yeah, pretty sure they have. They so got they them. so the Eagles finish up the season. They've got Buffalo tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Then they have the Niners on December 3rd, then Cowboys, Eagles, then Seahawks and the Giants on Christmas. Um, then the Cardinals on New Year's Eve and they finish the season with the Giants on January 7th. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it looks like Philly is going to win the division, but. Philly's gonna win the division. Stop. Just, just like said, stop bro, your sentence looked, right there. Stop your sentence. They've lost one game. Mace, come on, bro. And in that one game, they still actually had a legitimate shot to win it. Come on, man. Don't do that. Don't I want you to be confident in your team, Mace. Okay. And for the first time in my life, because you are my friend, I don't root against the Cowboys actively. I don't. I actually root for them to win these games because I'd be like, man, let my nigga Mace get some happiness out of this football season since I sure as hell ain't getting nothing with the Bears, <laughs> okay? Since I'm over here in, in football hell, I'm like, hey, let my mans get some. Like said, well, honestly, nigga, you, bro, you outside, outside of playing San Francisco, I have I have extreme confidence in my team. Yeah, but the worst part for you is you guys are probably going to end up having to go play San Francisco. Which More is the worst life. and best thing for us because if we actually get over the hump, I mean, that does a lot more for us. Like, what what do they always say to, to be the man, you got to beat the man. Wouldn't it feel kind of hollow for Dallas to, to have any sort of success this season and not get over San Francisco? Like, like for, for instance, if um... if it Let's just say Dallas makes the conference championship game, plays Philadelphia, but Philadelphia ended up being the ones that play 49ers and beat them. It would feel kind of hollow for Dallas to be in that conference championship game, in my opinion. So you guys actually. Well, yeah, depending on how it shakes out here, you're going to either end up playing the. Because whoever we play Lions. from the NFC South is a wash. 
So it'll be either the Lions, the Niners, or the Saints currently that you guys end up playing in the first round of the playoffs. It just more than likely it's it the one of the NFC South. South. So so that that's a wash. We just gonna say that right now. I, I, Yeah. So yeah, that that divisional round is really what it comes down to. It's for our sake. I think it needs to be San Francisco, because like I said, if if Dallas somehow makes it to the conference championship game and and San Fr- and we avoid San Francisco, it'll feel hollow to me. I need you got to you got to beat your boogeyman to 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 truly arrive you know what i'm saying i i don't disagree with anything you're saying there i I just think that when it comes to the playoffs that's all that matters to your team your team it doesn't matter how you guys finish this season all that matters that you make the playoffs and you do the job in the playoffs everything else is irrelevant that's why I think all those, so all those from, big so scores. From, an, from, a, a fe- from somebody outside looking in, what does success look like? Is it a conference championship? The Cowboys, have, is the it Cowboys, it, have, to, the Cowboys have to make the Super Bowl. Or is it, it so it, it? At least the conference championship. At least they have to get to the conference championship and compete in the game. They can't get there and then get blown the hell out. Right? Is, so they got to get there and compete. There has to be steps to it. Like you can't continuously hit well, that wall. Yeah, I, look, I. I I will say ideally what it is for you guys this year is it's it's Super Bowl. But real being realistic about it, what would be what could be considered a success for you guys getting to the conference championship and competing? Because then that says, all right, we're here. We just got to do better when we're in that conference championship game. But you cannot get to the conference championship, right? Like, like let's say you guys play San Francisco round two, right? You can't get blown out by San Francisco and then just think that it's all good like no, no no that means it's just more of the same that just means you guys won one more playoff game and then you got blown out you know so yeah yeah yeah. like i said worst case scenario and best case scenario for dallas is playing san francisco in the playoffs because you got to get over that hump for what like i said for whatever reason they got your number and it's at the i mean if if you exercise your demon you feel pretty confident going forward. But if they yeah. continues to continue to bop you over the head, that should ring some bells to somebody that something's got to change. So exactly. it's it's best and worst case scenario for Dallas to play San Francisco in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, pretty much how it's shaking out, though, Mace, one way or another, you're going to end up running into them because they're going to win the West. So, like, say you run into them to be, like round two, the way things are standing right now, the Eagles are winning the division. You guys are going to be a wild card team. You're going to have to go on the road to San Francisco to beat them. So we'll see how this all plays out. But we got to get into the rest of this week's game here because I know we're, we've been going for a while. I got a real sidetrack there talking about Dak. I got real fired up there. Now, like we ain't talking about MVP Dak right now, brother. We ain't even hey, brother, even look, look, I'm not even going to argue with you on this. Dak Prescott is playing the best football of any quarterback in the league right now, bar none. You guys know I think Patty's the GOAT. Dak is playing the best currently. Like he has been on fire in the fuego way. Like, whoo. I mean, he's only caliente. Bad pretty much has been that San Francisco game, but Dallas as a team played terrible. Yeah, it Amen. looked like y'all saw your bully and was like, oh no. <laughs> That's really what that San Francisco game looks like. But we got to get into the games for this week. Oh, man, I totally just closed the wrong window. God, I keep doing that. I'm, I'm off my game right here. Right? So, <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, one thing I will say, though, with the Niners, just real quick because I don't want to get stuck on, it, on, on them too hard here. The Niners better stop lying to themselves about Brock, about Brock Purdy. You have to stop it. You have to understand what he is, admit it to yourselves, so in the playoffs, you have a chance and you don't set yourself up for failure. If San Francisco wants to compete for a championship, Mace, they have to – the the most important thing for them is keeping that roster healthy. That's it. Because if we've already seen what Brock Purdy looks like without Debo, and it ain't good. Like Debo is clearly – he's that linchpin guy for the offense being – 
good or great, right? Because they're like they're a good offense even without him. They're going to beat a lot of bad teams because they're going to be able to run the ball on them. They're going to be able to, um, you know, really control the clock. Their defense is very, very great. Like we we all know this. But Brock Purdy, I, we can we'll talk about this over and over and over. When it comes to the playoffs, at some point you're going to need that quarterback to make some throws. You're going to need him to hit some of these real small windows. He's going to have to throw somebody open and not be thrown to an open guy. I am not convinced by any stretch that Brock Purdy could do it. Because here's what I'll say to you, Mason. You're going to you're going to probably laugh. Brock Purdy and Tyson Bajan, they the same thing. One just happened to play for Kyle Shanahan. They the same thing. I mean, Kyle Shanahan is doing wonders for bad quarterbacks careers. He made Jimmy Garoppolo look like he was good for years. And Listen, I'm going to tell, you, I'm a tell you something. If you are a mid-round quarterback in the draft, you better be, you better sacrifice, do what you got to do, pray to who you got to pray to, that you go to a Kyle Shanahan coach team. Because you got a shot. You've got a shot at a second contract playing for Kyle Shanahan for any period, any amount of time. Yep. Yeah. Um, so for me, I just 49er fans, your defense is gonna carry y'all a long way. That roster is gonna carry you some real places, but I think by the end of this season, the 49ers are gonna regret getting rid of Trey Lance. With how everything's going to play out, because Trey Lance, look, I I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke up to people and and tell them, hey, hey, he's looked great in all his film. Some of his film that we have of his NFL stuff didn't look great, but that's also part of. And this is something that shout out to our boy Will, man, because he's put me on to this point, and I started looking at at the actual 49ers games and how they would get called. Kyle Shanahan just did not call games the same for Trey Lance as he did for Brock Purdy. You know, plays that would be advantageous for a Trey Lance, he wasn't calling. He he was calling the offense in different ways, which says to me something that I think I me and you had talked about, which is I don't think Kyle Shanahan actually knows how to use a high value quarterback. I don't think he understands that because those guys will go off script and I think he gets very frustrated when guys go off script in his offense because you, def- you can guy. definitely see it because don't get me wrong. While Kyle Shanahan is a a one play caller at the same time, there will be some time like you so from every now and then you're going to need your quarterback to do something extra. Like he, he may have to step up, scramble, and start the scramble drill, or you may need to move the pocket for him to give him a option. But it it seems like with Jimmy G with Brock Purdy, it's a we got. I'm gonna set this fake up for you, but he's gonna be wide open. He's gonna be booty naked open. If he ain't, just throw it away. But when you have a quarterback who is confident in his athleticism, they're not just going to throw it away. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to live to play another down. They're going to try to make something happen. And I think that's where Kyle, where the frustration for Kyle Shanahan is. He's like, just run my offense. That's it. So when the quarterback gets in there and is like, nah, brother, I can make a play or two from time to time. <clears throat> You got to go through those growing pains and let 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 them make those plays because it'll turn out going going forward it will turn out way better for you than just to just say hey bro number one is going to be wide open because we didn't set this up with five other plays or just throw it away like you, you can't convince me Brock Purdy would be would do would play well in any on any other team you just can't mm-hmm. convince me that. No, what did I just, what did I say? Yeah, yeah. Brock Purdy and Tyson Bajan, they the same thing. One just happens to play for the Niners, and the other was the backup quarterback for the Bears this year. So it's the same thing, dude. Any, look, 
I think what people get wrong is, Mace, is they don't understand. All of these college quarterbacks, even Tim Tebow, if you scheme up guys booty naked open, he can get the ball there. Shit, they can all do that. The difference is when you become a pro, you have to be able to throw in tight windows. You have to have to throw with little A and big A, anticipation. You have to be able to throw it accurate, on the spot, leading your receiver. Sometimes you got to hit him back shoulder right on the spot where, hey, if you, if you lead him one more step forward, that man's getting the hospital ball. There's a lot to it that people don't understand, and this is one of those things to where I talk about guy in Mace. We've talked, and you've talked about this on the show. What makes a lot of these guys special? The one that the true special quarterbacks is being able to throw off platform when it's getting a little messy and muddy in your pocket. Can you get your feet right enough to still deliver that ball? Guys like Brock Purdy's, Kirk Cousins, um. Jerry Goff. Goff, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Jerry Goff. That's that's who they are, man. And I'm not faulting them and saying that they don't have a, a team that they can be successful with in the league, but there is a severe limitation that you are going to run into in the playoffs with those guys. We've already seen the maximum of what that can do with the San Francisco 49ers and Jimmy Garoppolo. At some point, Mace, when they needed Jimmy to throw it, make a pass, what was he doing? This. Throw it with my eyes closed. I mean, even even if you go back to San Francisco's last playoff game versus Dallas last year, Purdy was in shambles. Mm-hmm. And then and and I mean the Eagles just happened to capitalize more so than Dallas did. But while Purdy was in that game, shambles. <laughs> yeah, that's hey, that's why I said, man, it People, it, it pissed me off to no like limit of all this Brock Purdy talk because it was like so many people who I know they they know the game of football all of a sudden turned off their fucking brain because they fell in love with the story that he was Mr. Irrelevant and he was having this success. It's like, bro, we already saw Jimmy Garoppolo do this exact same thing. It ain't special. It ain't like he came out here. It, it ain't like they went from Alex Smith. To Patrick Mahomes with the same skill players, it ain't it ain't some big jump like that. So what what are we doing here? You know what I mean? Like, and, and I'm just San Francisco Niner fans. I love y'all. I don't ever root against the Niners because I love the Niners as a kid. They have my they had my all time favorite quarterback, Steve Young, right? But I think y'all are about to see to where Trey Lance, trading Trey Lance was the biggest mistake you could have made because there was no reason for y'all to actually trade him. You could have just held on to him and said, you know what, Trey? We ain't gave up on you yet, dog, but he's earned his job as a starter by how he has played. But you still have a chance to go out here and compete. We're going to give you these reps too, right? I understand that's not ideal of how you want to develop your quarterback, but hey, we're going to give you some reps too, dog. But they didn't do that. They said, hey, Dallas, take your quarterback of the future that you guys can literally just sit and develop all you need to for the next, like, two, three years as Dak continues to play out his contract. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yep. <laughs> it's not it's not wise decision making. You, you, you get to slot a 26-year-old who's had time to learn. I mean. It's good. Look, I know a lot of people were were very, very down on Trey Lance after everything happened. But like May said, they can let him sit for three years, and in three years he'll be 26. <laughs> Which means you're still getting good years out of him. And if you keep him around, that probably means that you've also got him on a very good team-controlled deal. Which means your cap ain't going to be messed up from your quarterback. It's, it's a win-win for the Cowboys there, no matter what happens. Um, but we got to get moving into these games here. I totally got a sidetrack talking about this the Niners where I said, I wasn't going to say a lot, but then we said a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's get into these games for this week. You got Bucks versus Colts. Mace, who you got? I got the Bucks. Yeah, I'm going to roll the Bucks here too. I think the Colts are just a complete poop show. So yeah, Bucks all day here. All right. Another uh, kind of poop show game here. We got Patriots at Giants. Mace, who you got? Patriots. I mean, I don't even know who the Bill only plays well versus back. I mean, he he can scheme up something for against a bad quarterback. So, 
Yeah, I'm gonna go Patriots here. I think that the I think Daniel Jones is most definitely gonna throw them out. Is he back game. finally? So, uh, you know what? I think let me see. I think he might be. I thought I saw. Oh no, no, he's out. He's out. He went. He got his ACL surgery. So yes, now it's the, the, the dude who's never even seen the Patriots. Oh yeah, yeah, before. yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this is a Patriots <laughs> blowout, probably. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, moving on here. Steelers at Bengals. Now, for a second, I, I do want to set this one up here for you. Those that don't know, Steelers finally fired their offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, that, that a lot of fans have been asking to have happen for like two, three seasons now at this point. Um, so they finally fired him. We're going to see what can Kenny Pickett do under somebody else calling the plays and designing the offense. So that's that's kind of intriguing, but also more intriguing. This is the first week that we actually get to see what kind of coach is Zach Taylor. You had plenty of days off in between your last game and now this one, right? You had enough time to scheme it up with your backup, figure out how you were going to try and attack a team. Now is the time when Zach Taylor fit, proves his worth as a quarterback. Do I think he's gonna is going to look well for them? No, I think it's going to look bad. So me personally here, Mace, I'm going Steelers all day. I don't know about you. Who you got? Oh, same. I'm going with the Steelers, man. I think the Bengals are going to be in shambles on offense. Um, we've already got a taste of Zach Taylor as a head coach without Joe Burrow. Woo! That's good. That allowed them to draft Jamar Chase. Yep. Yep. So we know what it is. All right, here we've got uh Panthers at Titans. Mace, who you got? Ah, uh, you know, I'm gonna go Titans here. Um Panthers are just a, a bad roster on offense, man. Um it, it sucks for Bryce Young, especially giving especially considering what they gave up to to get him and thank you it's it's going to be tough it's going to be tough for them to convince free agents to come there next year to make that roster better but it's it's just tough for it's just tough well, hold on man. i do want to say i don't know if it's going to really be that tough and the reason i'll say that is they're going to have so much money to throw at somebody that we know somebody's going to be like Looks like I'm a Panther now. <laughs> <laughs> Is that shit going clear? Yep. Carolina, here we come, brother. Yeah, bro. So I, I think they'll get somebody, but I, but your overall point though, like it is it's a tough go for them out there right now for sure. Yeah, it's, it, is, it definitely tightens in this one. Yeah, so I, I'm going I agree with you 100 percent on that. I'm most definitely going Titans here. Um I you know, I will say this while we're talking about the Titans, Mace. Will Levis, he hasn't looked great but he's looked like he might if they can get some things going there it looks like he might be all right i still think he's got a lot of stuff he needs to work on but we 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 have seen guys can work on things right but i think he does have the tools to play nfl quarterback but he's most definitely i think it's played out exactly as what we what we talked about and why neither of us viewed him as an early round quarterback like that was because he's got a lot of stuff he's got to work on his mechanics not not the best he the one thing that really makes me nervous about him and i don't know if you've gotten a chance to check out many much of his clips and stuff from him playing but um he relies a lot on just the pure arm strength. His mechanics are all sometimes real, real effed up. And it's like, ooh, dude, you can't have real effed up mechanics and actually have long-term success. But that but mechanics are something that we know can be. Yeah, you can work on that. That's a that's a hiring a quarterback coach in the offseason. I mean, Dak went from a dude that couldn't throw the ball more than 30 yards down the field at one point to getting with a quarterback coach and quarterback trainers and, you know, saying, so I mean, it, it's possible. The, the, the mm -hmm. common theme is possible for him to fix his mechanics. That's not the worst thing to have to fix on a quarterback. Yeah. Cause I, cause from what I've seen, his decision-making has been all right. You know, it's, it's about what you expect out of a rookie that, you know, feels like they kind of have to do more than what they really should you know they should kind of take what's given to them but they don't we know how this goes right rookies they think they can do more but he hasn't looked terrible i'll say that he hasn't looked terrible he hasn't looked convincing yet where it's like okay 100 yeah you guys made the right decision but he's also hasn't played at a at a rate that i'm like y'all flubbed this one big time you know? so <laughs> we'll see what happens there i think because that team is also a, a 
a mess because they're in such a transition period, right? They, they're a team that, just like the Giants in the offseason, needs to be shopping their running back and getting some draft picks back and saying, we're not in the position to where this guy will ever be of enough value to us. So we're going to trade him, hopefully get multiple picks back so we can get at least one of those right and move forward, right? So both both Derrick Henry and Saquon still supremely talented. Oh, yeah. They could definitely be the reason a playoff team wins a game. Oh, they could have that same effect that Christian McCaffrey had for the 49ers last oh, yeah. year when they brought him in. So I think both both teams need to be shopping their running backs in the offseason. Um, we'll see how that goes, though. But moving forward here, we have got Jaguars at Texans. Now, Mace, this is what I really want to talk about. And I appreciate just to say again, uh, I appreciate everybody that just came here. Make sure you like, subscribe, rate us, review us, and everything here while you're here. If you don't hit that subscribe button, I think you're a big hater for the rest of your life. So you don't want to think that. I'm a nice guy, really. I promise. Um, but Jaguars and Texans, Mace. We've we've spent a lot of time over the past couple of years talking about the Jaguars, so I don't want to get too much into them right now because we're going to have to talk about them more because I believe these teams meet one more time here. And that'll, that game's going to probably decide the division. But let's talk about the Texans here, man, and C.J. Stroud. You get those games locally broadcasted mm-hmm. every week, you know, so you, you've had access to really see this guy play. What are your overall thoughts on him? You know what it is? I think it's a guy who... Even at even going number two, it wasn't like I'm the con- I, people were convinced that he was the second best uh, quarterback. So in, in my opinion, I think C.J. Stroud has has pretty much just coming here, the man on a mission. Um, he even in his last college game, you saw that versus Georgia. You knew that he would step up when the the, the lights were big. He could get it done. So for me, I. The success still is a surprise. His efficiency is a surprise. You don't you don't expect a, a rookie quarterback to come in and put in the type of numbers that he has. Um, but Houston got it right, man. Um, I think I think I was live on here at one point saying that um, D'Amico Ryan's wanted um, Will Anderson, and and Jerome was saying that they wanted. Um, that that CJ they had to get CJ Stroud. They ended up getting both, and and the draft capital that they gave up seems inconsequential at this point. Pennies on the dollar. I mean, absolute the, pennies on the dollar. Houston got it right. You know, um, that's the biggest thing, and, and and not even to not even to to not even slight how well Tank Dell has been playing these last what three four games. Um, he has uh, proven that he he's clutch for one. Um, even being what like five nine, one hundred and sixty pounds. I mean, he he can still go across the middle, catch the ball, take the hit, absorb contact, all of that. So Houston is de- they're definitely the surprise of the season. Let's not be wrong here. I mean, we we didn't think that CJ Stroud would be the reason this team was losing games, but we definitely. Definitely didn't think he'd be the reason that they'd be winning games. Look, I'll say it plain out and simple. I thought he was going to have a good rookie year, but Jesus Christ, this dude has proven that he is the truth, man. The only things that the only thing that I could compare it to Mason, I, and I thought about this the other day, right? I really was, I was sitting. I was like, okay, who? When's the last time we saw a rookie quarterback come in and have this much impact, right? To where he he came into the league and we were like. Holy man, if you just build a team around this guy, you got some. And for me, when I look back on it, the only person that we could legitimately say that with was Andrew Luck. Everybody else, even I mean, we can even go back. Lamar, you guys, I think everybody that watches the show knows we love Lamar. Lamar's rookie season didn't look like this. Even his good stuff, it did not look like this. <laughs> okay. No, no. <laughs> um, the one game that Patrick Mahomes played his like rookie year that he filled in for Alex Smith, it did not look like this. <laughs> okay. No. CJ Stroud is something different. 
And I know, first question a lot of people got to ask me, oh, as a Bears fan, are you mad that you guys didn't draft him? Nope, because he wouldn't have been this with us because that a part of that is coaching. They have good – they clearly have a good coaching staff. Down I'll say this. Fans talent. In the offseason, there are two coaches – who are who everybody's going to be knocking down the door to go get the offensive coordinator from um, Detroit and Houston's offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. I think those two right there are going to be the, the, the two who everybody's like, listen, bro, we'll, we'll ship our dude out right now. Just come on in. We'll clean house right now. We even change the carpets for you, brother. What you, what color you like? Yeah, I don't disagree with you. Um, so, like me, like I'm, mean, you know, my team's probably going to be in the position where they're going to be looking for one of this coach. Which guy would I prefer in this situation? For me, give me the Texans guy because he seems to understand. Oh wait, CJ Stroud has athleticism, to, athleticism too. So, so I can use that, but he also knows how to like really be a quarterback, and I can scheme some stuff up. And these guys seem to be another guys off of that Shanahan tree that. Love doing this thing called scheming guys booty naked open, and I would love to have a head coach that is developing yeah, my think, quarterback and scheming niggas. I can't, rem booty I, I can't booty remember naked the open. Texans his his first name, but it's Slowick something Slowick. That's his, uh, the OC up there, and then uh, Detroit's uh, OC is what Ben Johnson. Yeah, I know it's Ben Johnson for sure. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about Bobby Slowick. Okay, yeah, there we go, there we go. I knew it was something Slowick, but yeah, those two. Remember those two names because. Well, Those I mean, hell, Ben are... Johnson was going to be a head coach last season and last offseason, but he was like, ah, I think we're building something here. I want to see if we could do something special with this Detroit team. So we know what time it is with him. But, yeah, I think you're right for sure on Slowick. I think he's going to get a lot of love for what's going on down there. And um, I think it's going to be similar to the rub that um, that dude got from working with Jalen Hurts. This will be very oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, Oh, yeah. Uh, what is his name? Yeah, yes, thank you. It's going to be very, very similar to that. Um, Before, but, as far as the game goes, you, honestly, man, um, is this game in playing in Houston? It, yes, it is in Houston. It's a noon game in Houston, too. Okay, well, I, I'm honestly, man, I do think Houston's going to win this game for whatever reason. Um, Jacksonville, they're up and down. They're too up and down for me. They, they, they can look really good. Trevor Lawrence can go out there and, and ETN, they can look really good as an offense. And then at other times, it just looks like they don't know what they what's going, what they're supposed to be doing out there, man. Um there's just way too much money on that spent on that offense right now to for them to be still inconsistent at times. So oh, and just a quick correction. This is the Jaguars most definitely need this game because um they're only one game up in the division, and mm -hmm. if the Texans win this game, that would give the Texans the season sweep over them. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I, I really feel like Houston's going to do it, man. I mean, there's there's nothing that tells me that they can't beat them again, especially at home. Yeah, man. Um, so that thing you were talking about with the, with the Jags, mm -hmm. that I think is a consequence of the head coach. Because if you think back to when he was in Philly, that was the same thing that happened. One week they'd be the hottest team ever. Then the next week you'd be like, do y'all niggas even know how to play football? So It's almost as if he doesn't change his scheme until he loses. Like he doesn't change something up until he loses. Yeah, I don't. I think Doug Peterson is most definitely another one of these guys that comes from my scheme is my scheme. You know what I mean? I think yeah. he's most definitely one of those guys. But we'll see what happens with this game. I think this will be the early – the game that everybody's trying to watch though. early. Oh, for, sure. for sure. Sure, tune it in Jackson, that one. Texans. Yeah, I think I'm going to try and get that on too. Um, and then the last game in the noon hour, we've got Saints versus Falcons. So, Mace, who you got here? Um, Just a reminder, the Saints are the leader in the division right now. Yeah, well, by what, a game and a half or two games or something like that? I think it – yeah, I think it's like a game and a half. Give me a second. Let me just pull the standings back up. Or it might just be a game because I'm pretty sure Atlanta's four and six. And um, oh, Orleans, yeah, no, it's a game. It's a game. Yeah. Um, 
this was being played in Atlanta, right? Because when they played, they should have played in New Orleans earlier. Or is it the other way around? They are in Atlanta. Yes, sir. That is correct. And I gotta give the nod to Atlanta in this game. Um these the 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 NFC South games are usually kind of like home and away. Um I think Atlanta, I think Atlanta will get it done. Slightly. This nope. Is- I don't. I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop you there. Nope. I'm going Saints. F Arthur Smith. F him. F him and his whole coaching staff, Mace. F him. They don't know how to use some of the most talented players in the league. That is kind of wild, man. How just for for has four favorite. touchdowns in his career, Mace. Four. The Porter already got four this year. Listen, for the people that are watching this right now, do us a favor. Imagine if Kyle Shanahan was coaching this team. You give that man Kyle Pitts and Bijan, along with Drake London and and uh, Patterson. On top of that, I'm gonna just say this. He been the coach since 2021. The team looks worse than it did, and they have more. They clearly have more talent because we see the players there. It looks worse than it did when he first came in. Player, you got to go. I hate all you. I'm, all I'm saying, you though, Kyle Shanahan season. was on. He was on yeah. that coaching staff, and had everybody talking about Matt Ryan, league MVP, Matty Ice. That was the that was the prime of Matty Ice, right? Kyle Shanahan had Matty Ice in his prime. And y'all let that man get away. It is what it is. All right, yeah. Uh, Moving forward here, though, we have got the start of the afternoon games, and we start with Rams versus Cardinals. Mace, who you got? I swear to God, if you don't say if you don't say Rams, nigga, I'm really I am picking the Rams, mind. bro. What I'm you about mean? to say you better <laughs> after everything you said earlier in this show, you better pick the damn Rams. <laughs> I am picking the Rams, dog. <laughs> that'll be because that'll be our one win versus a winning team, brother. What you mean? All right, yeah, yeah, whatever. I I'm taking the Rams here. Um, I think Kyler Murray's going to play good, but I just don't think that they have enough there in Arizona. You're asking Kyler Murray to do too much with not a lot of talented guys on that team right now. So, and we know Kyler won't be doing his homework. So, you know what I'm saying? We, we know what it is, dog. Hey, plus a new Call of Duty just came Call out. Duty? Like, like, hey, and, and the zombies is actually elite. And this they, year. We know, we already know people. Kyler ain't been doing his homework. New Call of Duty. Plus, he only, he only hey, what, came back like two weeks ago. So you for sure know he. Yeah, you for sure know he ain't done work for nothing. Well, and you know what's messed up? He seemed like he was working hard before then, but then that new Call of Duty came out, and it's like, oh, well, we know what this this means. Hey, Kyler's Kyler is back in full effect, brother. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and All also, right, to Kyler's credit, another little tidbit: his um. His Texas high school touchdown record is still safe. Unfortunately, DJ did not. He was not able to uh, break that record last night. They lost to DeSoto. But, hey, it is what it is. You almost got got, brother. (laughs) All right. We moving forward, though. We've got Browns at Broncos. This is interesting because, look, we were really crapping on the Broncos early this year. No doubt about it. Um, but they have seemed to round into some type of at least being able to compete form here, May. So who you got? I got the Broncos. Um, I just think the Browns won't be able to put up enough points to uh keep up. Like I said, we we gave we gave Russ the business, and he has done nothing short of be the Russ that we know he can be. He's making last season look like the outlier. Definitely. So, yeah, I got Denver here. I just think that they. Well, I mean, hell, they went from one and four. <laughs> I mean, one and five to five and five. So yeah, they're playing some good football. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. For me, man, I just don't believe in the Broncos. Can't do it. That Browns defense is too real. 
Russ is gonna be out there running for his damn life, Mace. He's I mean, I, that, I, I completely <laughs> understand, but I, if if it came down to who had the ball last, if Denver has the ball last, they're for sure gonna win. If the Broncos or if the Browns have if no. the Browns have the ball last, and they need a score to win, I don't think they can do it. I don't think they. I think if the Broncos, if the Broncos need it, got the ball last, Miles Garrett is making a play. That's what I got to say. Miles, Miles is about to come out there and remind you. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Ho. <laughs> it's like he he about to make a play. That's all I can say. But uh, yeah, so it's pretty clear. I'm picking the Browns. I don't trust the Broncos. No. Uh, all right. So Mace got Bills at Eagles. Who you got? I'm gonna go Philly here. Um. The Bills, until they get a run game, it's going to be hard to pick them versus good teams. Like, the Bills are going to have to come out and do something they've never really done and and hand the ball off and control the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not them. And I don't think they're going to do it here. I don't think they're going to do it this game. Uh, I mean, I think y'all already know how I feel on this situation. <laughs> uh, I, mean, <laughs> I called one team a, an actual good team that finds ways to win, and I called the other one a fraud. So I think you know I'm picking the Eagles here, and I think everybody's going to realize that it wasn't Ken Dorsey. That's the problem there real quick. But moving on, the last – a game that is actually starting up in that afternoon window. It is Chiefs at Raiders. Now, Mace, we saw um, the Chiefs not look their best over the past couple weeks here. They've been having some struggles here. It seems like a lot of defenses have really adjusted to the fact that it's like, hey, dog, we're not going to let Travis Kelsey beat us. You got to make one of these other bums beat us, like like old three-name Valdez Scantlin, who decided I need to drop a wide-open touchdown pass. And if I just catch it, I'm rolling into the end zone untouched. But uh, we have also seen that the Raiders have actually started playing some better ball here over the past few weeks since they've gotten rid of that clown show named Josh McDaniels. So, Mace, who you got? One of the wildest stats in the NFL right now is Patrick Mahomes not losing to the AFC West on the road. Is this a road game for them? Uh, yes, they're in Vegas. Oh, yeah, they're for sure getting a dub. That's like one of the wildest stats. This man doesn't lose in his division on the road. I mean, do I even have to say anything? <laughs> Since you went to Vegas, you might as well say it. Since they in Vegas, you might as well say it. Go ahead. Hey, look, man. Go look, ahead. Just say it. I'm going I'm to I'm just, just say it for all y'all that don't know, man. You always bet on black, damn it. Patrick Mahomes all day. Woo! All day, baby. Always. That's the GOAT right there. We don't disrespect that, man. But, all right, but then the Sunday night game, we have got Ravens at Chargers. Mace, uh, these seems like two teams going in, the, in opposite directions for sure. I think the um, – the shine is finally fully off of Brandon Staley, and people are starting to realize, oh, my God, this guy stinks as a coach. He's a defensive coach, but every year his defenses stink, and they keep spending more money on defense, and they still stink. How does that work? But so it uh, looks like he's more than likely going to be fired at the end of this year if they keep playing the way that they do. See that the Ravens, the Ravens are trying to keep themselves rounded in shape so they can get into the playoffs and possibly get to the Super Bowl. So, Mace, who you got? I got the Ravens here. Um, you remember how we, you know, how we just talked about those two offensive coordinators that that got some jobs coming up. We already talked about the two teams who are in perfect position to grab one of them: Bengals, Chargers. Those are the two teams right there who need to get rid of the guy in charge right now, and and. Do whatever you got to do to come out with one of those two gentlemen. Correct. 
So, yeah, I mean, the Ravens defense is playing excellent right now. They finally figured out – well, I'm not going to say they finally figured out how to use Kyle Hamilton, but Kyle Hamilton has proven that that 40 time don't mean nothing. Nope. Nope. They got See, I'm with you there. I'm with you. He's the X factor on that defense. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not. He's, I'm not saying he's the best player on that defense. That's obviously Roquan. I mean, he's excellent. But the X factor on that defense is Kyle Hamilton. He can put him up. He's big enough to be in the box. He's good enough to be out in in pass coverage. He has the instincts to do both, the strength to do both, the speed to do both. Yeah, man. I think this is going to be a wash. This is going to be one sided. Yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, I can't say anything else that uh, would <laughs> would dispute that because I'm on the same page. But then uh, Monday Night Football got Bears at Vikings. Mace, who you got? I got the just Bears. to give you a heads up, Justin Jefferson is supposed to still be out, I think, for this game. I got the Bears. They got, they got, they got to. They have to get this done. Plain and simple. I hope we win, but do I believe it? I don't know, bro. I don't, at this point, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm going to pick the Bears, but I don't feel great about it because uh, Eberflus is a clown. Getsy is a clown. Last week, we could have had a – we had a fourth and under one. It, all game long, we had been aggressive, and then all of a sudden, the fourth down and the fourth quarter, excuse me, we're like, Let's be conservative, kick a field goal, came back and lost the game. Yep. So, I don't know. Glad to just see that Justin Fields was looking good last week. Hope he continues to look good. All that I want for the rest of the season is the young players that we have continue to look better and better so we know what we have. So when we fire these two clowns, we can bring in a coaching staff that knows how to continue developing you guys and get you to the next level. So I'm going to take the Bears. But, Mace, tell the people where to find you. You know, man, Twitter, funky underscore stuff, 09, Twitch, twitch.tv slash Swaggy Mace. Hit me up. You already know. Mr. Low Elo Janitor, tell the people where to find you. Holy hell, we haven't done episodes this long in a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized how long we've been going for it. Low Elo Janitor on YouTube and Twitch. No nigga, more. next time, turn on a light in your damn room. Nigga, nigga, yeah, I, no, like, it's, nigga it's, it's, shadow talk. He's got to listen, bro. He has to keep up the troll. Like, trolls are usually, <laughs> st- you know, ain't, ain't a lot of light in a troll's life. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's my camera. Camera just flickering with the lights. The yeah, it, even the camera takes on the persona. <laughs> <laughs> I see how this works. All right, at Jay Spanda Man everywhere. Uh, you see my pretty face of the ITC logo. Make sure you like, subscribe, rate us, review us. Um, just to give you guys a heads up, most of the time we'll be doing live episodes now. The Spotify stuff will still be going up on Sundays. I just got to get better about making sure that I go and do those after the fact. But this will be your new format. We'll be here mostly every Saturday. Uh, I don't want to say every Saturday, but mostly every Saturday because we do have lives. But lives and wives, brother. <laughs> yes, yes, very much so. Hey, we, very we much can't, so. We can't fight, we can't go against the grain every week. <laughs> nah, bro. Hey, I love sitting here talking about sports, but I love something else too. So, um, that being said, this was another resounding episode of your favorite weekly sports show, and that is ITC Sports Ball. Yeah, y'all missed that. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to him one more time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I am done. I'm done. <laughs>